A graph of position versus time really has a, a great deal of information. Uh, we're familiar with, with reading the graphs just in terms of the y value and the x value and how those change over time. On a graph like this, we could say that it starts, so we have position x in meters on the y-axis and time in seconds on the x-axis. We could say that it starts at a time of zero seconds at a position of zero meters. And then we can see from this curve, it's moving toward these positive numbers. Uh, at some point, five seconds in, we're at a position of positive five meters. Uh, a little later at 10 seconds, it looks like we've made it to about seven meters there. We go a little bit beyond that here, not quite to eight meters. And then we start to go back. We go to seven and then six and then back to five here. And all the way we head back to that zero meter position and then even onto the negative side of positions here. So we obviously have the position information. We also have some velocity information that we can get from this graph. We've done some qualitative stuff there, um, looking at the slope. So here we have a, a steep positive slope or a large positive slope. So we'd say a large positive velocity there. Here, a smaller positive slope, so a smaller positive velocity. For this straight line segment, we'd have a constant positive slope, so constant positive velocity top here, we'd say we get to a slope of zero, so a velocity of zero. And then everything after here is a negative slope, so we've got negative velocity. Starts off with a little negative slope, so a little negative velocity. And then down here, it looks like we get to a little bigger negative slope. This might be a, a straight line, so a constant negative slope for a while. Constant negative velocity. But we can do even better than that. We don't have to speak qualitatively. We can speak quantitatively. We can calculate velocity from these graphs and get a number. In fact, we can do that in a couple of different ways. We can calculate the average velocity or the instantaneous velocity. Average velocity for different time periods, instantaneous velocity at different moments. Now, velocity deals with how rapidly an object's position changes. Average velocity deals with some time interval. We look at where the object is at the beginning of the time interval and where it is at the end and we take that change in position, how far it's gone, divided by the amount of time it takes. And we have the equation average velocity is equal to change in position over change in time. This delta x, sometimes called displacement, change in position is displacement. Instantaneous velocity really isn't all that different. It's still an average velocity. It's still a measurement of how rapidly the object moves from one place to another. The only thing that changes here is we're not dealing with um, a large time interval anymore. So up here we had this uh, delta x and delta t. We had this change in position and change in time. Um, now we're going to deal with a change in position and a change in time again, but very, very, very small. Um, so such a small time period that we could think of it as being essentially an instant. Uh, if you're familiar with limits, this would be the limit as delta t approaches zero. So we get to a really, 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 really tiny uh, time period. And so for that time period, we could say at that moment, we have a certain velocity. We're moving a certain speed in a certain direction. That's what we're dealing with, with instantaneous velocity. Um, so we call that an infinitesimally small time interval. And uh, to borrow some calculus uh, notation here, um, delta x and delta t are used when we have um, you know, some bigger changes in position and a bigger time interval. But if we get to these really small, these infinitesimally small time periods, we just switch the notation. Now we have a dx and a dt. It means the same thing as it does up here, just on a much smaller scale. So small again that we can think of it as being associated with a single instant in time instead of over some longer time period. Now what's the cutoff? When do we start thinking of it as uh, instantaneous uh, velocity instead of average velocity? Uh, really the limit is as t approaches or as delta t approaches zero. Uh, but in practice, uh, if, if we have a small enough time interval that the velocity, the motion, doesn't change appreciably during that time interval, then we can call that the instantaneous velocity. Now, how fast is that? It kind of varies from situation to situation. So let's look at a couple examples of these and, and try a few calculations. 
First off, an average velocity from a time of 5 seconds to a time of 10 seconds. So average velocity is the change in position divided by the change in time. The times that we're looking at, 5 seconds, we've got a data point right there, and 10 seconds, we've got one right here. So during that time interval, it goes from uh, positive 5 meters to positive 7 meters. And so our average velocity then will have the displacement at plus 2 meters. And the time between 5 seconds and 10 seconds is just 5 seconds. 5 seconds of difference there. All right, and that gives us an average velocity then of uh, 2 over 5, so 0.4. That's in the positive direction, so positive 0 0.40 meters per second. Okay, now what about instantaneous velocity? Well, for this one, we're not looking at some time interval, but some moment in time, or as close to it as we can get. Now, really, you can't do just a moment in time. If, if we tried to do it just a single moment in time in this equation, our delta t, our change in time, would be 0, and we can't divide by 0. So we're just trying to get as close to that as possible while we still have um, this, this minuscule time range. Um, so the point in question is at 8 seconds, and so that's right here. And so let's look at uh, uh, a little bit before 8 seconds and a little bit after 8 seconds. Now at 8 seconds we're on this straight line segment of our graph. And so if we go a little bit before that and a little bit after that, you know, we have these three dots all in a line, and we can kind of extend that a bit. And we don't really get a whole lot of new information on that um, because it's just right along the, the same line that we were working with a moment ago. Um, so this uh, problem will look very much like the one that we just did. Um, we find that on a straight line segment on this graph, we have constant velocity. So the average velocity during that time is exactly the same as the instantaneous velocity at any moment along that line. So that little line that I've drawn in there, I can find the, the slope of that line, the line that goes through my, uh, uh, my three points here the, at 8 seconds and a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right of that. It goes right through those points. But we already have two points set up for that. We already made this calculation. So our average velocity is just the slope of that line, which is, again, going to be, uh, I can calculate it with the same two points I used before. So I can do positive 2 meters and 5 seconds, and I get a velocity at that moment of plus 0 0.40 meters per second. All right, let's try again for uh, the same graph, but a different time interval. Um, so now average velocity from 10 seconds, so that's when it's right here, to 20 seconds when it's right here. All right, so our average velocity, same equation as before. We have delta x over delta t. Our average velocity then is going to be the change in position. So here, it looks like we're at about 7 meters. And here, I would call that, it looks like between 1 and 2, let's call it 1.5 meters. So we were at 7 meters, now we're at 1.5. That number has gone down. We've gotten closer to 0. So the change then is going to be a negative. And to get from 7 to 1.5, that'd be a negative 5.5 meters. And then the time interval from 10 to 20 seconds, that's 10 seconds. And so our average velocity during that interval is going to be negative 0 0.55 meters per second. All right, and last one, instantaneous velocity at a time of 15 seconds. So again, we're looking at a single moment in time for instantaneous velocity right here at 15 seconds. We want to, uh, we, we always have to look at a time interval, but we want to make it as close to zero as possible here. So let's just think about what's a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Bam. 
And then let's uh, let's just extend that a little bit. We can draw a straight line through those points because a straight line has the same slope anywhere. So it doesn't matter if we actually measure the slope between those two points right next to the 15, or if we measure them a little bit further out, we'll get the same answer either way. Now for this part, you definitely want to use a straight edge. I actually am here, but I'm on my tablet, and it doesn't uh, doesn't always pick up the straight lines very well. Okay. Um, so on this one, let's pick out two spots to measure from. Um, it looks like this one falls nicely on the grid lines, and it looks like maybe this one does as well. Yeah, I get rid of my little curvy section afterward there. All right, so for average velocity, I want the slope of that blue tangent line. So it looks like up here, I'm at a position of 10 meters. Down here, one, two, three, four, four and a half meters. All right, so we go from 10 to four and a half, so that would be a negative 5.5 meters for that one little stretch there. All right, and then for uh, for the time, uh, let's see, right here, we are at a time of 10 seconds. And over here, looks like we're at a time of 19 seconds. So that would be a difference of nine seconds now. And so the instantaneous velocity then at that, uh, that moment in time is gonna be 5.5 divided by nine meters per second. That'd be 0.61 and it's negative, negative 0.61 meters per second. And here we ought to notice that the uh, the average velocity from 10 to 20 seconds was not the same as this instantaneous velocity within that time range. So from 10 to 20 seconds we have a whole range of different slopes. We have a little positive slope to begin with, looks like we get to a zero slope up top then a little negative slope, and then a little bigger negative slope, and an even bigger negative slope by the time we get down here. So we shouldn't expect that each instantaneous velocity between those two moments would have the same as the average velocity. Sometimes we're going to have a little lower than the average velocity. Sometimes we're going to have a little higher than the average velocity. That's how averages work. Well, that's it for average velocity and instantaneous velocity. We'll do more with uh, acceleration. It's actually exactly the same, just on a velocity versus time graph. So we can have average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. And then the other piece to this is area under a curve, which is uh, a little bit of calculus. Don't tell anyone that we're teaching calculus, though that's not a prereq for this class. Though, uh, a little note here, you've actually been doing calculus with this whole tangent line business and finding the slope of that blue line that we drew in. That's calculus. Don't tell anybody. We'll see you next time, folks.